how you want it. I just, like I said, I seen him picking up steam. Like he was, he was, you know, making noise. And I felt like he got to the point where like it's time to run it, you know? I feel like he's coming into his own. I am myself. And I felt like it was the perfect time. When people were saying when Ryan Garcia went down against Tank Davis, mm -hmm. and people were saying he quit, I'm like, have you ever been hit there before? No. Oh. Yeah. Um, if he was my fighter, yeah, I would have a different kind of approach. What would be your approach? I would pull him. You would pull him from the fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe Rogan has just given a brutal warning to Ryan Garcia ahead of his upcoming fight with Devin Haney. Similarly, promoter Leonard Ellerby's apprehension regarding Ryan Garcia has reached a point where he contemplates withdrawing him from his bout against Haney. He said, if he were my fighter, I'd pull him. Yeah, everything you're reading is kind of what it is. Ellerby's concerns stem from unsettling reports about the renowned fighter. However, amidst speculation, the likelihood of such a withdrawal remains remote. When asked who he would favor between Haney and Garcia, Ellerby said, it's a good fight for both of them at this point in their careers. Neither one. You have to focus because a big part of the preparation isn't just the physical part. It's mental preparation. Ellerby commented on Garcia, stating that fighting at an elite level is challenging because it requires significant focus, especially when engaging at the highest levels. He said, to fight at an elite level, it's hard to do everything. And I know firsthand that when you're fighting at the highest level, you've got to have a tremendous amount of focus. Moreover, he speculated that Ryan might be promoting the fight, although he was unsure of his exact activities. He added, it's always hard when you you're a younger fighter and you haven't been in a lot of big time fights to be able to. You gotta sit still. It could be that he's Ryan promoting the fight. I don't know what he's doing. Now we know that Ryan Garcia's online statements have taken a bizarre turn, prompting the intervention of the New York State Athletic Commission, which has urged Garcia to undergo a mental health assessment. Fellow 140 pound contender Michelle Lazarza Ali Rivera finds himself unable to resist a wry shake of his head. Rivera holds the conviction that regardless of Garcia's mental state, the upcoming fight merely serves as a cash grab and is unlikely to deliver a fiercely competitive showdown. Rivera told Boxing Scene, Let's be honest here. Everyone knows Haney will mop the floor with Garcia. Garcia may have a lot of followers, but he is overrated as a fighter. Haney will win the fight easily. Moreover, Rivera confidently asserts his readiness to fill in for Garcia should he be unable to compete for any unforeseen circumstances. He said, Boxing fans know that a fight between Haney and me would be very competitive. I am focused and have been training. No one knows if crazy Ryan Garcia will even step in the ring on April 20th. And even if he does, what kind of shape is he in? I am the biggest threat to Haney at 140 pounds and ready to step in for Garcia. But this is not it. Duke McKenzie has also urged Ryan Garcia's team to pull him out of the Devin Haney fight. McKenzie, an advocate for mental health and a retired world champion in three different weight classes, expresses apprehension regarding Garcia's recent behavior. Speaking about the rising contender on Talk Sports Fight Night, he said, I think Ryan Garcia is walking a very fine line. He could go either way, to be honest with you. I think when you're a world champion, you have to carry yourself as a world champion. McKenzie pointed out that Garcia has publicly admitted to regularly smoking weed, drinking alcohol, and getting drunk. Behaviors McKenzie views as inconsistent with those of a world champion and indicative of someone who may be struggling. He added, I don't really see that in Ryan Garcia's makeup right now. He's publicly said he smokes weed, drinks alcohol, and gets drunk regularly. These aren't the sort of traits you would expect of a world champion. These are the traits of somebody who's clearly on the edge. Based on his observations, McKenzie believes that the battle shouldn't take place. He said, they should pull him out. Somebody should pull him out. Somebody should say to him, Ryan, you're not in any fit state to fight right now. It's not too late. McKenzie further expressed concern by stating that it's obvious Garcia could and likely would sustain serious injuries if the fight proceeds, feeling quite certain about the potential consequences. He added, you can schedule a fight three months, six months, however long it takes for this boy to get right in his own mind because he's clearly not. It's not rocket science. He can get seriously and will get seriously hurt if this fight goes. I'm pretty sure of that. When questioned about the clash between Garcia and Haney, Jake Paul had his own perspectives to share. During a recent episode of the Jake Paul podcast, the 27-year-old problem child expressed his outlook on the matchup, likening its likelihood to a coin toss at 50-50. Nonetheless, in the event of the bout materializing, he firmly sided with the dream as his preferred victor. When Haney actually goes through and, and happens. I would say it's like a 50-50. And who do you have for that fight? Who would win? Yeah. Who's gonna win? Devin. Hmm. He's gonna smoke him. Yeah. And I and I obviously I, I love Ryan. Like Ryan, but like two well, different that, There's one person who's been in the gym taking the sport seriously and never partying once and fighting the most elite competition. Yeah, he's been you know, Ryan it doesn't isn't taking it. 
In April of the previous year, Garcia experienced his inaugural career setback when Gervonta Davis secured a seventh-round knockout victory over him. Acknowledging this defeat, Paul anchored his forecast for the Haney bout on this very premise. He said, Ryan isn't taking it seriously, and he showed me his lack of heart by not getting up on the canvas when he basically quit. He would have stood up. Ryan Garcia finds himself in a challenging situation at present. The majority view him as the clear underdog in the upcoming bout against Haney. Reversing these expectations will require considerable effort on his part. Embracing this perceived underdog status, Paul contends that engaging in a match with Garcia might not warrant the recognition of a professional fight. He noted, I think it could be like an exhibition, probably. I think he thinks he could win, and I would like to just deflate his little 130 pounds. Paul did not back down when questioned about a possible battle between him and Rye during the conversation. He emphasized a significant flaw in Garcia's intelligence, even though his criticism of the 25-year-old is based on his lack of commitment. Paul said, his footwork sucks. Once I'm learning more about the sport, it's like he's fast and quick and has been doing it his whole life, obviously. But his feet, I would tear him apart. Meanwhile, in an effort to mend the fractures in his relationship with Canelo Alvarez from years prior, Garcia has taken steps to reconcile. Inspired by Canelo's recent display of kindness towards him, Garcia publicly expressed gratitude to the Mexican champion for the invaluable guidance he received during the crucial developmental phase of his professional career in the sport. In an Instagram post directed to Alvarez, Garcia made reference to his Mexican heritage in an attempt to start a conversation. Garcia's ancestors originate from Mexico, even though his parents were born in the United States. He wrote, No amount of hate can separate our Mexican bond Canelo. Garcia and Alvarez engaged in a poignant exchange on social media, showcasing their mutual admiration and dedication to celebrating their Mexican roots. This unexpected interaction caught many by surprise, considering the rare of such cordial exchanges between the two fighters over the past couple of years. Garcia further added in his post, Thank you Canelo for all the lessons and teachings you gave me. Also thank you to the Canelo team for all the training you helped me with, forever grateful, and I'm thankful. From the bottom of my soul, a proud Mexican, Canelo Alvarez replied gracefully. In comments, the 33-year-old wrote, Just focus and get that win. You know we love you, kid. Heartened by the response, Garcia commented on Canelo's response in Spanish. My big brother, no matter what I'm with you, you taught me a lot. No one can tell me otherwise. I will always respect you. The camaraderie did not stop. Canelo replied, noting, Always with the intention to help from the heart, we are with you anyway. The latest exchange between Canelo and King Rai has stirred attention. Despite King Rai attracting criticism for his conduct online within the sport, Canelo has extended a form of support, albeit without overtly endorsing or condemning his actions. This backing holds significance for two reasons. Firstly, it emanates from the influential sphere of Canelo within the boxing community. Secondly, it marks a reconciliation following their public rift two years ago, a development that left many fans disheartened. Here is what Canelo recently said. I think in my, in my mind going says help Ryan because he's a good kid. He's a good person. You need to help them, uh, them him and, and the people around him need to help him. Garcia and Alvarez once shared the training grounds at Eddie Reynoso's stables, where Alvarez showed considerable support for Garcia, often attending his matches. However, tensions arose in 2022 when Garcia parted ways with Reynoso, citing a lack of attention from the trainer. In response, Canelo voiced his disapproval of the young fighter's dedication. Now, two years later, it appears they are burying the hatchet and moving past their differences. A few days ago, to a reporter, Canelo expressed his concern for the young fighter. He said, The only thing I wish right now is that he has people to to help him because he needs it without judging him. I don't know what's going on with him, but I hope he has someone. On the other hand, Ryan Garcia has taken to social media to publicly address an altercation involving his friend Devin Lee and Devin Haney's team. Lee was reportedly accosted by Haney's associates shortly after concluding his training session. While the exact details of the confrontation remain murky, Lee documented the aftermath, providing updates and sharing a video of the incident. It appears that he found himself ambushed by several individuals from Devin Haney's security squad over a disagreement. Lee appears convinced that he's battling for the cause of Jesus Christ, portraying Devin Haney negatively. Ryan Garcia swiftly turned to his social platforms, issuing a stern warning to Haney in response to the incident. The worst part about the, the, the snakery is they caught me like right after I was done training. Like I was just finna finish my workouts, I was exhausted. That's all good. 
This unmistakable message served as a prelude to their impending confrontation in the ring. Garcia said, Wow, this is who you support. Look what Devil Haney did to one of my friends. It can get real ugly, Devin. Don't take it here. You and your team can get caught slipping as well. Remember that. Garcia shared a photo capturing Devin Lee's battered visage following a confrontation with Devin Haney's entourage. Lee bore the brunt of their attack, sustaining significant damage to his right eye and a fractured nose, as evident in the images he disclosed. Additional injuries marred various regions of his face, but the severity centered around his eye. Ryan further added, I know where you run and sleep, remember that. Don't let this get ugly. Give him 100k for his troubles or I'm pressing charges and it's full-on war, so be careful in how you respond and move thank you. Recently, the face-off interview between Garcia and Haney was made available by Dazone Boxing. In it, the host questioned Garcia about his alleged fake comment about Devin Haney. Unmoved by Garcia's justification for the comment, Haney quickly labeled the Victorville native as delusional. You've said in some interviews in the build-up that you think he's fake. That you say he says one thing to your face and does something different behind your back. What I meant by that is, Hey, like, I know, he, like, we get friendly, but, like, I know what's underneath that. Answering the host's question, Garcia suggested the reason he called Haney fake in previous interviews, as he put it. We get friendly, but, like, I know what's underneath that. Garcia feels Haney is out to get him when he gets the opportunity. So that's all I meant by that, said Garcia. King Rise further elaborated. Haney probably thinks he's not fake. He probably thinks I'm fake. I'm acting. I'm doing this so. However, when the host probed Haney about how he felt about Garcia's statement, the dream claimed, I don't know what he's talking about, so he's delusional. However, However, that's not all Haney said about Garcia during the face-off. In the same interview, Ryan Garcia made a bold prediction about how his next fight would turn out. Garcia had been made fun of by Haney for being a one-trick pony. So in response, Garcia said, Bro, it would be funny if I knock you out with a right hand. How hilarious would that be? Only has a left hook, and then boom, that would be comedy. Furthermore, Devin Haney, who immediately brought up Garcia's battle with Gervonta Davis, thought the forecast was humorous. Haney said, I feel like he hasn't fought on that elite level, but when he did, he quit. At the end of the day, whether he wants to admit it or not, the world watched him take a knee. Ryan Garcia tried to put some disparaging remarks about his opponent, but Devin Haney was able to turn the tables on him by labeling him as insane. However, the question is, is there any validity to Garcia's claims? Delusional. I don't know what he's talking about. We'll take on Ryan Garcia. Well, how bad did I beat this shit out of you, though? You never be out of me. Stop it, bro. You never be I, I can't fight the way you fight, bro. You know, I can't. I, I need it. Now, we have some old comments from Joe Rogan, where he talked about Ryan Garcia's skills and abilities. In a coveted episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan delved into the intricacies of one of the most lethal striking techniques in martial arts. Renowned UFC Hall of Famer and actor, Bass Rutten, teamed up with Rogan for this episode, injecting an extra dose of interactivity into their conversation. That was when I realized how hard someone can kick you in the legs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched him kick the heavy bag, and I don't think there's ever been, I've never seen a human ever in yeah. all my day. I've seen a lot of people kick. Yeah. I've never seen a human kick harder than Peter. Their dynamic exchange delved into various topics, with a particular focus on the notorious liver shot, a devastating blow in combat sports. Rogan highlighted a recent incident where even a prominent contemporary boxer had to concede defeat after succumbing to a brutal liver shot from his adversary. Afterwards, many fans fans voiced their disapproval of the boxer, perceiving his actions as a testament to his wavering dedication. However, Rogan, a seasoned martial artist, understood the precise reasons behind the boxer's decision to surrender. Four years ago, you got into the ring when Ryan won his fight in Anaheim, and as the champion, you challenged him back then. The pugilist mentioned by Rogan turns out to be none other than the renowned ex-WBC interim lightweight champion, Ryan Garcia. Despite facing criticism from many fans for what seemed like a premature end to his previous fight, Rogan and Rutten stood by him with their vocal support. In the midst of dissecting the most impactful strikes in combat sports, Rutten recounted a close call he had with a liver shot that almost put him out cold. When people were saying when Ryan Garcia went down against Tank Davis, mm. and people were saying he quit, I'm like, have you ever been hit there before? No. Oh. Yeah, it's everything just my this is where does my love for the liver shot come from? Yes, first Thai boxing class getting dropped by a liver shot. Now I was training with a class A fighter already pro. This intriguing anecdote immediately piqued Rogan's interest, drawing him further into the conversation. He shot down all of Garcia's detractors with a query. Have you ever been hit there before? Asked the former martial artist. It seems that he was implying that the spectators would never know what Garcia was going through at that particular moment. It's fair to say that the agony had to have been unbearable for even 
Ryan Garcia to concede a loss while still appearing okay. And he figured me out really fast. And yeah. he dropped me with a liver shot. And I, I remember asking him, I go, what is this? It's terrible. Furthermore, a boxer of Garcia's caliber would undoubtedly push himself to the brink in order to keep his perfect record. Therefore, according to Rogan, the critic's inability to handle liver injections was what made them say things like that. Meanwhile, we know that Garcia has recently posed a series of unsettling posts on his social media platforms. These posts, already peculiar in nature, took a chilling turn with mentions of none other than Joe Rogan, adding an eerie dimension to the unfolding narrative. The now-deleted posts mentioned things like, the files of UFOs are coming out for a reason, as well as, this isn't Ryan, I've hacked his shit. The tweet that really attracted the attention of the UFC community, however, was one that not only addressed Rogan, but also a remote campground that has been the subject of numerous conspiracy theories. The post read, Bohemian Grove. I was the only one to expose them. They were in the woods. Joe Rogan and Alex Woods say the same thing, and I'm the bad guy. The secluded Bohemian Grove sprawls across 2,700 acres in California, serving as an exclusive retreat where the influential and affluent, known as the elites, purportedly convene annually. According to radio personality Alex Jones, it was purportedly established by Mark Twain. Despite lacking substantiated evidence, Jones claimed to have obtained footage of a ceremonial gathering at the Grove in the year 2000. Joe Rogan has delved into the realm of conspiracy theories surrounding a particular location on multiple occasions in the past. One instance was during a conversation with Alex Jones, where they discussed the enigmatic rituals associated with it. More recently, he revisited the topic while chatting with Kid Rock, who recounted being ejected from the Grove after allegedly punching someone in the head. So many, you know, Bohemian Grove rabbit holes. I went there once. Bones. I got kicked out. Did you? You <laughs> yeah. went to the Grove? Yeah. Oh, shit. Why'd you get kicked? Fucking weird. <laughs> Weird, I punched a kid. Ryan Garcia also shared his encounter with the Grove, shedding light on his own experience with the place. Garcia joined Andrew Tate recently for an interview on X Spaces. He revealed, They took me to the fucking woods and they tied me down. I'm not fucking joking. I have proof. Bohemian Grove is real. They fucking tied me down and they made me watch. Yes, I fucking lost it. When asked if he had proof, the 25 year old said, If Alex Jones could get a video from the Bohemian Grove, of course, I could. In light of the controversy surrounding Garcia's bout with Devin Haney, the WBC super lightweight champion responded to the social media posts. In a now-deleted tweet, Haney wrote, The fight is happening April 20th. He's just playing crazy to sell it, which is weird because it's people who are actually crazy out there, but he's just acting for attention. Haney believed Garcia was only acting, but the former champion addressed this, but not before causing concern for his ex-wife. Concerns have been mounting for Garcia ever since the debacle unfolded, particularly among his former spouse. Ryan Garcia was previously wedded to Andrea Salina, a prominent Mexican fitness influencer and the mother of two of his offspring. In light of recent events, Andrea wrote on her Instagram story, If all my followers, who are believers, can you please pray for Ryan? We are not together, and I've been in contact with him. A few hours after this, though, Garcia addressed the situation himself, much to everyone's relief. He said, Hey guys, it's Ryan. I'm coming on here to explain what's going on. I'm not in possession of my phone. I can't get access to my Instagram. My cards are locked. I'm being really taken advantage of. The combat sports world as a whole, not just those close to Ryan Garcia, have been concerned about the the entire story. However, the entire boxing world is buzzing over Devin Haney's forthcoming world title battle versus Ryan Garcia. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.